will call this meeting to order. If everyone would please stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, first things first, congratulations to the Broadwater Reporter, which is now the official newspaper of record for Broadwater County. Thank you. So hopefully you'll have many, many years of a good, strong future. And it's a good one. <clears throat> yes, it is. Absolutely. Uh, it is March 24th, Monday. This is the Broadwater County Commissioner's meeting. And uh, just some quick reminders. Uh, we do follow Robert's Rules of Order. Uh, the purpose of this policy is to open up our public meetings to all Broadwater County citizens. Meetings are recorded and are on YouTube, and so please state your full name for the record. Any separate conversations, please take out into the hall. Outbursts will not be tolerated. Uh, everyone will be allotted at least three minutes to speak for public comment. And uh, all comments should be directed to the board chair. So with that, is there any public comment? <coughs> I'm Chair Tim Rabinow. I attended uh, a couple meetings here, um, and I just want, want to make sure that the commission is aware of a couple things happening. Um, one, Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks is setting quotas for lions, and in Region 3 here, we need to be on top of that as we did last year. Uh, I attended a meeting where I recommended an increase in quotas in 390-91 uh, because of the higher population of lions that still um, lies in that area. I urge the commission to send a letter to Fish, Wildlife, and Parks supporting that. Um, and we got a, basically we're at the breaking level of landowner tolerance of lions in that area, um, specifically between Duck Creek and Deep Creek and we need to make sure that we send a message to Fish, Wildlife, and Parks to get that quota raised on females so that we can get that population back under control. Um, we have Adam Grove from White Sulphur Springs coming in to take over Tom Carlson's place and uh, he needs to get that message from the commission as well as the Fish, Wildlife, and Parks Commission themselves who are meeting here the 15th of April um, in Miles City uh, so if they can get that message from the commission that would be great in support of that. The other thing that I guess I'd, I'd like to just bring to your attention um, is the legislative interim committee and this is again a fish and wildlife and parks issue. Heads up, um, 6.25 million dollar increase in fish, wildlife and parks funding is being sought with an increase, actually a new license is going to be developed as recommended by the Council to cost the sportsmen and the, and the hunters, etc., more money um, to participate. Uh, I just hear a whole lot of people really not very happy about that. I just wanted to make sure you folks are aware of that. Uh, this new license that they're going to be charging is called a hunting license outside of the conservation license. Um, and again, the idea is to generate $6.25 million per year for fish and game. They're out of control. They need to be sent that message. Madam Chair, uh, there's other things, but wanted to make sure you were aware of those too. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment this morning? Public comment? Public comment. All right. <clears throat> First on the agenda in about 10 minutes is Mike Conkey, so we will do some mail real quick. We have minutes for March 17, 2014. Those were sent out, I believe, last Tuesday. I'll move that we approve the minutes of March 17th.
It's been uh, moved and seconded to approve the minutes of March 17, 2014. Um, just one uh, request I would have for an addition, if it's all right with the board, is uh, the paragraph on page three that starts Elaine was present via telephone, right under the uh, sentence that's in italics. Just a motion passed at the end there, so it's clear. Um, if that is all right with the board. Right there, just motion passed. That change is right. Uh, right, right there, and it would just mirror this paragraph right there. That makes sense. Okay. So is that friendly amendment uh, approved? I'm fine with that. All right. It's been moved and seconded to adopt the minutes with that small addition. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Glad she got that change. That wasn't packed. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> he is from above. <laughs> if you could uh, maybe just read this later, I'll go ahead and sign it that time. Okay. All right. Um, you must have been thinking about this, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have a letter from Trudy Southwick. State of Montana, County Broadwater, I, Trudy Southwick, being duly sworn on, on oath, says that she is, and during the time here and then after mentioned, have been the publisher of the Broadwater Reporter, a weekly newspaper of general circulation, printed in Cascade County and published in Broadwater, Montana. The Broadwater Reporter has been published continuously at least one year, at least once a week in the county for 12 months, <coughs> since MCA 18-7-411 and 7-1-4127 requirement. The Broadwater Reporter circulation for the prior 12 months average $8.55 per week. Net distribution, paid and free copies, $8.98 per week. Paid subscriptions, mail $6.73. Free subscriptions, mail each week $16. Subscriptions, hand delivered, $14. And free papers to advertisers, proof of ad, mailed average $5 per week. So, again, officially we have a newspaper of record for Broadwater County. Congratulations, Judy. You've done a great job. Thank you. And next we have from the uh, Department of Agriculture uh, just a periodic sale announcement for the Helen and Rosen Park National Forest. This is for the period of April 2014 through March 31, 2015. Right. Yeah. But if you have a friend and want to let them know, then you can. <laughs> Next we have from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, kind of the same story. This is um, propo proposed Moose Creek Road, North and South Project is located in Deer Lodge County, Montana. This is not a project being proposed by the Corps, but by the applicant, the Corps will evaluate the proposed work and determine if it is permittable under current laws and regulations. Again, it doesn't pertain to us necessarily, but if you have somebody that lives in the area, you can let them know. Is that a logging project or a mining project, or does it say? Uh, it's, uh, it does say. It's quite long. If you'd like to read it after, you're more than welcome to. Anyway, 
Yeah. Yeah. I guess it might say there's some reason on that uh, Mount Hagen Wildlife Management Area. Next uh, we have from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, uh, this is a proposed RGP, which is a regional general permit, and this is for flooding mitigation. Um, again, not in our area, but if you have a friend that lives there, um, feel free to let them know. From the Montana Department of Environmental Quality, we have a um, issue for wastewater discharge permits at Rock Creek Mine. This is part of a road project. One minute early, so we'll handle an easy piece of signature mail. This is a letter from a citizen, Don Reynolds. Hello, Commissioners. Obert Greg Lance Solipka, dated March 16, 2014. I recently sent all of you emails regarding the possibility of holding a 50 50 raffle to benefit the Heritage Community Gardens. Perhaps I went about it the wrong way because I never got any response. We are having a Broadwater County Garden Walk, back yards of Broadwater and thought it would be fun and profitable to include a 50-50 raffle, raffle. I checked with Montana Department of Revenue and they said there are not any restrictions, go for it. But their website did state that approval was needed for the county commissioners and the record of income it has to be turned in within 30 days. Would this be something I can proceed with? I did look for the emails, I didn't see it in either the commissioner's emails or any of, uh, of mine, I don't know if you guys got it. But regardless, that's okay, um, this is an easy, an easy thing we've done in the past, it's um, one of those laws that um, one of our legislators could look at to kind of clean up. For a 50-50 raffle, apparently you have to get approval from the county. We have 50-50 raffles all the time. Um, we've done this with the fishtail in the past for the um, motorcycle raffle that they do. It's very easy, it's very simple, we just have to give our approval. She'll send us a copy of the um, budgeting, how much was made, how much was spent, that kind of thing. We just need to put a um, okay in the minutes for her to proceed. I'll make a motion that we approve that. Yeah, it's been moved and seconded to okay Don Reynolds to conduct a 50 50 raffle for the benefit of Heritage Community Gardens. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Aye, motion carries. All right, I will send her an email when we are done. And it's 10.15. It is time for Mike Conkey, DES, update Homeland Security grant proposal. Good morning, Mr. Conkey. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning, sir. Most of those were the county road damage, 
uh, done after the flood. What I was trying to do is document the damage on the high water. We've got some of those also. And then that one out there has the uh, brother of the Missouri Canal. Um, as we all know, the, the flood came one week after our blizzard, one degree below weather, and caught us off guard because of the uh, ground was frozen and uh, a lot of snow and it rained and the uh, water ran. It was warm that night, also the water ran off the river. Most of it was a low level flood. I think we're going to have some more flooding later on, high level, and the snow at the higher levels having started there. Uh, summary there, county roads. Uh, Dana estimated about $40,000 of damages. Uh, we sent that to Montana DES and the Broadwater Missouri Canal, about uh, $100,000. Now they're going to do that work on their own. This was a base upon if they hired contractors to do that. But they don't have to because they're a private, nonprofit organization, Water Users Association. And they've already began on that project. Uh, they moved the canal a little bit closer to Brandon uh, Harris's house. And they've got the power line moved now and they've already doing some work. They want to get water on there. And that canal about the 15th of April, that's when the water rights start. And I think they'll uh, meet that deadline easily. Uh, we have monthly uh, EMPG meetings. We meet uh, the third Thursday at uh, 3 p.m. We had a good turnout last Thursday. We had about uh, 16 people there. Uh, EMPG grant, we're proceeding. We are going to, uh, next month, let's see, uh, we're going to finish a quarter, so it'll be January, February, and March. We will end our, our third quarter. On a federal grant quarter, and we're doing well on that, and that's half federal and half uh, county funds. Um, we're all in progress of doing the community welfare protection uh, plan, uh, working with uh, tri counties. That's being funded through the uh, Title III funds, although I haven't spent much money on that. Uh, the radio station the school has went off the air during the cold weather, and the morning of the flood, uh, we had made arrangements to get vigilant electric to come in. You probably saw the picture in the paper. And put that tower. Put they put actually put a new antenna on the side of the water tower, new coax cable, and that worked out well just in time for the tournament game that night. I believe it was. We are updating our hazard uh, mitigation plan, our, ha our haz hazmat uh, hazardous materials plan. Uh, worked with the fire board on that, and they're going to get back to us next week. Uh, this uh, week we had an MRL. Or last week we had an MRL. Review of safety standards hazmat came to town. We had 52 uh, emergency responders uh, participate in that. That was good. Um, mitigation, we're uh, working monthly with the Tri County Fire Safe Working Group, uh, Deep Creek Restoration Project. Uh, I talked to Sean Thursday. He wanted me to go out and take some pictures of those bridges, and I did. Our biggest problem is going to be on where we need to put in new bridges, is going to be on Lightning Barn under Deep Creek and also Carson Lane. We have culverts in there several different culverts. Uh, they're not large enough to handle the flow of water, and I think that's where we need to concentrate our efforts. Uh, Lower Deep Creek Road, uh, just past the Broadwater, Missouri, was, it's going to the east. It has a nice bridge to put in several years ago, and it's about 20 feet wide. It's concrete, and they concrete um, beams across there. And there's another one there by Wickens, to you turn and head to the, to the north. That's in good shape. I went up to uh, uh, Clopton Lane, they put down a new bridge in several years ago. It's, it's very high, very wide. And the only problem we have is on the south, on the east side, south of the creek. The creek comes around there on that so uh, Ray and Betty Horn's property. It needs to be some more riprap in that area, some big boulders and stuff to keep that from washing. It tried to wash out in the 2011 uh, flood. Then I went on up and took a look at the uh, North Fork Bridge. And that's the bridge that's really low, and it's always been a problem there. And I, the way I understand, Sean said the highway department is in the process of redesigning that, and they will actually do the, the construction paper for that bridge. And then the other reach of the river, or the creek, excuse me, the reach goes down to reach 15. They take creeks and divide them in different reaches. They think it's kind of a technical term. From the North Fork Bridge on down through Terry Frost, Carlson's, and Johnson's just to live there, and down there it goes underneath the river. I mean, excuse me, under the highway. That part there, they want to do some work on it. Watch, it's getting actually quite deep. And there, there is a dike along there where the old deep Creek Turbidian used to be located in that area. Those that are ancient. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. Uh, they're below the bar, and 
they need to rip out that part of that dike, probably half of it's been washed away. Those are the two, three areas that I think that, you know, we should focus our concentration on. Um, we didn't start any fire safe uh, fuel mitigation projects yet, but we are going to cooperate with the local fire department to get that started. The thing I want to bring to your attention today, you see our collaboration efforts we're working with everybody that, uh, in the community of different partners, is I want to talk about Homeland Security Grants. It's the new cycle for 2014, and I am proposing two, two proposals. This uh, color sheet is the signature page. And this is what I'm proposing. Now we want to finish, I guess I better keep one of these to myself. We want to finish uh, by two-way radios for our public safety agencies. And I put together based upon figures I got from Capital Communications. And uh, I'm proposing on page two, you'll see there, buying radios for search and rescue, animal service, fire department, DES, County Public Works, and school district. Those are portable handheld. Mobile radios there, uh, the fire department, they uh, got some in the last go around, but they uh, are a few short, as well as they're planned by some more equipment, with some more vehicles and service. School district for the buses, and then the base station for one for our emergency operations center, County Public Works Road, and then City Public Works. Now, I did not include any mobile radios that go into vehicles for the road crew or city government. The reason I did not include that is because quite a few years ago, uh, under Sheriff Knapp and uh, Mr. Flanner had got a COPS grant. That's through the, you probably know more about this than I do. Crime Control, is that correct? They got brand new radios for the sheriff's vehicles. And the several years prior to that, the county bought with county money brand new trunkable Motorola radios for the sheriff's office. So when those new radios that came in on the cop grant, they had to go in cop cars. So they took those radios out, and the sheriff told me that there's 11 of those. And we can put those in the road equipment anytime soon. We may have to buy a few things like antennas and, and wires and speakers and a few things. But I think we can take that out of our uh, uh, CIP or operability funding, which we've got. It had originally 15,000 health money in it this year. <coughs> we spent a little of that. And that's what I propose on that. And it's, this is a notice of intent. This is not our application. Montana DES and Homeland Security wants us to put in a notice of intent, let them know the project we're thinking about. And if they approve us, they go ahead and apply. Then we'll get into writing grant application and justification. Might even be <coughs> a grant writer, somebody that can help us do this and understands grants better than I do. So this is just the first thing. And they need to get that in this month. And actually, that's what that phone call was about. I told my meeting with my commissioner to, at 10, and they thought I would be out at 50. But anyway, <laughs> I will email that to you if the commission approves. The second grant, the radios would be our first priority if the commission concurs. Our second grant would be a generator for emergency operations center. And that's estimated to be, estimated to be about $50,000. And our emergency operations center is going to be out at the fairgrounds at the 4-H bill. I visited with Virginia and John uh, Rouser, who's the chair of the fair board. And we've talked about that for the last one or I think we need to follow through on that and, and use that, designate that, and get some money in there and uh, have a backup generator as the power goes out. Now, this is a high priority for the state of Montana and uh, Homeland Security Department nationwide because of the, the blackouts they've had in the eastern United States several times this winter, but it's gone weeks without electricity. And they want to, the only generators we have in town is over here at the hospital, over at the Sheriff's Office Detention that automatically kick on. Uh, the old rest home on the hill at one time. Fire department has a portable generator on our trailer, and they're gonna go around to the different fire stations and, and get a transfer switch and plug in so they can move it to which station they want to during the blackout. And that's their plan. And uh, so I'd like to, you know, consider this as one of our, our projects. Put in two, two requests for Homeland Security Grants for Broadwater County. 
and the top priority would be finish the radio project. Second would be get a generator. And I think we can, I think we have good chances of getting both of them. Any questions? Commissioner? Um, do you need a motion on this? Mm -hmm. to, uh, yeah, entertain a motion that to the generator and the other two Homeland Security grants you had listed there. I'll second that motion. It's been moved and seconded to approve the, no the notice of intent for the radio grant and the generator grant through the Department of Homeland Security. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. You have our blessing. You need I'll need a your signature. signature on those two. Oh, there it is. I'm going to email it. They, we have to follow with the paper document. So there's your first one. And there's your second one. And I think we should go ahead, coordinate with Dana and Chapel Communications to get those mobile radios in the vehicle where he wants them and in the frequencies. Yeah, that would be a good idea. And uh, that's all I have to report. If you don't have any questions for me, uh, are you going to contact Dana on that then? Yes, I'll, I'll check with Dana and Capital Communications. Um, I called uh, last week to see if Capital uh, Gary talked to Gary on his cell phone. And he was going to have to check this week so he schedule in. It all has to do with Dana and both of them. We're kind of work a little bit in there together. And then. Yeah, last week Sean asked me to come to a hearing this afternoon, and I said I'd be available, but I forgot I had a doctor's appointment in both this afternoon. It's kind of why I scheduled this one for week. So I will okay. not be here for the 1.30, I think. Mm -hmm. so, any <clears throat> questions for me, Brian? Um, no, except uh, Bill Dewey. Did you talk to him about that? I did. Now? I talked to Bill Dewey. Uh, that's the lower Deep Creek drainage canal, and it's full of tumbleweed. He says that I also talked to a couple other people that are familiar with that. It was put in uh, probably around uh, 1949-1950 in that area to help drain the groundwater around the city as well as in those areas there. So they get in there and farm. And it starts up there on the Lower Deep Creek Road, probably the Wallace property and the White's property. Comes on down through uh, close to Jack Farm Road, goes under the highway there. Just below the Montana Ditch, as you go out here, it's probably out there about a three quarters of a mile. And then it goes to the duty property, on to Antnick's property, the BLM piece goes into the mill. The mill uses that water for their pond, that firefighting pond, and goes on down and dumps into the, the river. And we don't know who's responsible for that. Um, looking into that, okay. it does, it probably hasn't been cleaned out in all those years. Um, backs up, plugs those culverts. I don't know how big those culverts are with full water. How's that work? Yeah. And he suggested I talk to Chuck Hahn and the Wallace uh, family, the other white and all. And I'm going to have to do some research. I don't know who's responsible for cleaning that out. And uh, it could be a problem. But I don't expect to do a lot of flooding. It kind of lowers the drain gauge, it lowers the water. What is that in conjunction to the Irish Ditch? Irish Ditch is down here by the railroad tracks, right there across from the um, the little, uh, what are they called, Salzman's cabin. And it comes this way and it goes on down through this property this county has there, just I think uh, west of the gravel piles that pile up there. And the city has a little, what the city pound is, goes out that way. And that's kind of a drain ditch. It used to be an actual an irrigation ditch before they went in County Ferry Lake. And uh, so the, both of those are unrelated. I don't think anybody has water rights on it. Now, Mr. Duty told me that I think Sam Etnick had been pumping out of there. He was kind of like, I'll do. We well, yeah, find, find some water we put on the end of the irrigator cross. But I don't know. If, I don't think he has a water right on there. And uh, he said he got a letter from somebody. Some agency didn't know if it was the Bureau of Reclamation or Montana uh, DNRC, which regulates water rights, and said he didn't have a water right. And she tried to secure one of those, and you have to go through that buying process. And I don't know what the status is. I have to check with Sam. 
Right now, that's a project that's kind of out there that we need to look into more. Whose responsibility for that is? I hope it's not the county, but I don't know much more. Learn new things in this job all the time. Absolutely. <laughs> Matter of fact, I've got a lot to learn from these federal grants. A lot to learn. I know. Any other things? Have you answered your question? Yes. Yes. I got a quick question back on those bridges. Yes. Uh, I think stuff must be kind of outdated. On that um, Clopton Bridge there, where all we need is riprap, I think they have set for 100000 for that, for a new bridge or something. Well, that was in that original grant application. Yeah. That's correct. So, sure. so what's these things? They should be updated, shouldn't they? To, or we got an email, and I think I forwarded it to the commissioners from Denise, mm -hmm. that would like to have Sean and myself to study that original grant application for that $1.3 million and go through and eliminate some of those projects, like, for instance, the Terry Frost Bridge. I took pictures of that yesterday, and I think that's a permanent structure. Doesn't the North Fork money. Bridge, too, that's listed on there yet. I think it is. is. I believe it is, as well as several of those bridges. Uh, I don't think it's going to take $100,000 of rip wrap off the bridge. They usually bring that out on the line plant, and somebody has to haul up trucks. I think BSE did that during the 2011 flood, I believe, for Dana, to keep that road from washing out. I even remember seeing some photographs of that. But the road's fine now, and of course all the creeks are low right now. There's a lot of snow up in the hills, and it all depends on how fast it comes down. It usually doesn't come down until late April, May, but it all depends on warm nights and rain. We get a lot of rain, it all wants to come down at once. We'll have a lot of creek flooding. And uh, preferably people would get their haystacks and equipment out of the way because once it floods in there, you can't get, get in there for a month or two. It's too wet. To... So I think that's a good idea. I, I just have not had time to, to work on that, to go through that with Sean. Mm -hmm. uh, we do need to look at that, clean that up, and just focus on things that you know that are public projects. Now, others along there that want to, uh, like the Antonix Edward Bridges, a few of them have bridges on Deep Creek. If they want to do that, I would think the policy would be that, that they would have to come up with a 25% match, where the federal government would put the three quarters match. But that's a decision for the Board of County Commissioners. In the 2011, uh, Antonix lost a bridge. They did. And they reset that bridge back in there. It just kind of floated on down and they brought it back up. But it's quite low. And another high water will do the same thing. It needs to get up higher. You need to put concrete foundation with wings both sides and get it up higher so that trash can get underneath there. The water was got so high there at Antonix Bridge you just picked it up and floated it. That's why those culverts aren't any good. A lot of people like to put two, three, four culverts in. Problem is that it catches trash. The tree falls in and some trash, and then pretty soon you got to plug it up so you got, during a flood you have to maintain that. Check that every day. Have a back hole ready to pull all that stuff out of there. So if you get these big bridges, and of course Ron Spoon from Fish Wildlife and Parks, the fish biologist, we like to have wide bridges so that the creek can actually meander around. But it all depends on how much money a bridge is going to cost. Those bridges they put in, uh, I think at uh, Clopton and it was on Lower Deep Creek Road were, were well done. They were designed, they put footings in and they put sidewalls and it's been probably about six, eight feet uh, from the bottom of the creek to the clearance. And they spanned across, I think they spanned across about 26 feet across. They're made out of concrete and they'll handle semi loads of trucks and everything. They're wide enough that low enough, there's a little concrete, <coughs> in the, they're low enough to bring a swamper across there and it's wide loads. You and there's some reflectors that Dana put in that they actually just fold right over if you hit them. They just fall over and then just flip them back up. It show people the corners of the They were that well designed. And those are something like that we need, I think, at Carson and uh, <coughs> Lightning Barn. <coughs> now, Lightning Barn has a <coughs> two deep creek overflows south of the Lewis property there, Lewis House. A little bit further south, I think that piece of property to the east is Shoal Flynn's. And then as you get closer to the cemetery road, Deep Creek Cemetery Road that cuts up that hill, there's another one that goes in, another culvert that goes into the root property down there. But I think those will be okay if we just put a big bridge. I think it gets backed up there on the road, and the road backs up so much it gets into um, Joel Flynn's field, and then it runs on town, and then in a 
across. But I'm not an engineer. That's something that I think uh, Sean Hinkley should you know, bring a proposal to the commission on how to proceed on that. I think that's what he's doing in phase one. So I understand. I don't know what you're doing. I want dirt. <laughs> Hey, um, before you go, yeah. the uh, TSEP grant that we're going to be addressing at 1.30, dealing with building bridges at um, Lightning Bar and Carson and addressing Clopton, mm -hmm. that is separate of the $1.3 million grant, uh, and you're and Sean reevaluating that, correct? We're evaluating the one point, yeah, the FEMA grant. Yeah. On that, on that grant we got that I think last December, Kent Atwood was in here, I think it was. Wasn't it in December, mid December? I think so. They came yeah. in awarded phase one. And they have not awarded phase two yet. It's all based upon the engineering proposal. Kind of restudying studying that. And like Commissioner Slifka says, we need to look at that whole thing. It's going to take some time. I don't know a lot about that grant. Something I must study. Right? Kind of all happened before I came in here. I have a lot to learn. Dana knows more about him than I because he went through so many years ago. I just wanted to reiterate, it's not the TSEP grant we'll be addressing later on. That's a different grant. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the other thing is, is I didn't want anything to derail or a challenge to come up regarding the emergency declaration. So it is on our agenda um, in black and white so we can reaffirm the emergency declaration that we um, declared for the county. Well, that's right. You needed that. We've signed it. It's all done. Public notice. That's exactly. Right. Yeah. So I would just reiterate that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just in re entertain a, a motion to reaffirm the emergency declaration and declare it. I so move. I'll second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to reaffirm the emergency declaration uh, for Broadwater County. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. Well, thanks, Mike. Anything else for Mike? I'm going to leave these photographs here. Thank you. And I'll try to move them down on the second floor of the courthouse, leave okay. them up for a couple of days okay. for the week. Citizens can look at what happened to our roads. Oh, That's all right. Um, Brian, I mentioned this at LEPC. Brian uh, with Solid Waste may have some uh, information to add okay. to our uh, total cost oh, with great. the flooding. And um, also, if it is uh, something that the uh, lower deep creek now with Bill Duty has anything that it was added due to the flooding. Okay. Would that also be added to our It would be up to total? the D yes. We, okay. What we do is just send in our uh, initial damage assessment and then they sort through it, ask some more questions. Okay. And uh, that's all I can think of. Well, now I think it's just all tumbleweeds that blow it in. Yes. I, I think, think it's just tumbleweeds. Blood. Yeah. There's probably a lot of silt over the years, guts that was put in there uh, 60 years ago. There's Problem. some places where it, it kind of went beyond its banks, mm -hmm. uh, and there was a, um, I think it was a tractor that was lost in there, oh. was stuck in the mud. So oh, I'm not spring? Mm -hmm. really? Yeah. Well, and I went out there with Bill. On, on the south, uh, north of the highway? Yes, right right at Bill and Mary's house, mm -hmm. just south of there. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. That must have happened since. Just in the last two weeks, he said. Oh, okay. So, um, I just wondered if, what's that? Is it out now? Without, I didn't see it, so I'm guessing yeah. it was. Russell was sunk all the way. It was out. <laughs> when I was there with, with Bill, and that was right after the LEPC on the outside. Excellent. Now I'm going to take these out to the fairgrounds, I think the 28th Soil Conservation Dinner, and they've asked to put those on display up there. Excellent. And then Sean's putting together something for the 2011 flood deep creek. Famer Grant, he had to display his staff. Incidentally, so he's out of town with his wife. Yeah. You know where they went, don't you? Yes. <laughs> Poor guy has to spend time in Hawaii. Yes, isn't that? <laughs> so, anyway. Calls. Thank you, Commissioners. Thanks, Mike. Call Thank you, Mike. You met. A couple years ago, when he and his wife were there, he said, and you would want him to see his marriage. Thanks, Mike. He's still with his wife here. <laughs> Probably not a bad idea. <laughs> All right, it is 10:40. We're a little bit ahead of schedule again. I have another piece of mail.
This is um, a contract from Anderson Zermelian that we need to sign for them to go ahead and start their fiscal audit for Broadwater County. We've already agreed to uh, pursue this uh, in the interest of the taxpayers. We just need the formality of signing the contract and probably should have another vote to sign just to make sure we cover all bases. We have, yeah. It's just the uh, official contract. I'll make a motion to sign the contract. Okay. Now, is this the, our standard audit, or what's this audit been? Nope, this is the one on the uh, payment to reserve deputies looking into their practice and that particular budget. I'll take comment as soon as we have a motion and a second. And that's just in keeping with Robert's Rules of Order. We have a second, Franklin. <clears throat> I don't believe I seconded the first time around, so I won't again. All right, I will second the motion. Um, is there any discussion, Tim? And just, just a real quick question: Do, do you have a in the contract a cost of what this audit going to cost? Not at this point, no. It'll be an hourly rate that we'll pay, and it'll depend on what they find. So at this point, it's uh, preliminary. We don't have any kind of cost. Thank you. 190 an hour. Yeah. Yes, Trudy. Trudy Southwick. Um, <clears throat> they're going to do a fiscal audit, and is that going to take them further into the fraud? Because at one time, isn't this the one they said they, that it needed more than the fiscal audit, that it needed to go to their fraud department for fraud investigation? There hasn't been any fraud determined, and that's what the fiscal audit is for. If they determine from the fiscal audit it needs to take another step, then yes, they will do that, and that is the reason for the cost, is they do have that department engaged in this. So if there is not a fraud uh, investigation, there's not been fraud determined. This is the fiscal audit to find out what the exact facts are. Thank you. You bet. Any other questions? All right. Um, it has been moved and seconded to sign the contract with Anderson Zermelian for a fiscal audit. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Um, and 
as far as that goes, um, per Robert's Rules of Order, when you abstain, you do need to declare a reason that you are not voting, that you are abstaining from the vote. What would be your reason, Franklin? Yeah, well, there's a lot of reasons I can list them all, I guess. One thing here, about two weeks ago, all you could talk about was a fraud investigation. And as far as, uh, I don't know what all the, you got an audit there. I mean, everything's on uh, public record. And you're abstaining from the vote for what reason? Put down whatever you want, I guess. Excuse me? Never mind. Okay, would you please let the record show two votes aye and one vote uh, abstain. abstain or decline uh, or no vote um, without a, a reason for abstaining. I don't know how to put that in the minutes. There might be something in Robert's rules we can look at for the wording. Doug Ellis, right on time. Morning, Doug. Treasurer, taxes on Goose Bay Marina. Basically, what's going on is we got a, now we, the Department of Revenue, got a letter from Goose Bay on their 2013 taxes. Um, and this is on the property that Reller owns out there, the store and the gas pumps and yeah, all the area. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and this first letter is the Department of Revenue's response to them. Um, and basically, the Department of Revenue isn't, isn't, uh, doesn't want to do anything, and, and Bruce Bay doesn't feel that they should have to pay their taxes because all the things that were going on. They basically had them, um, you know, to where most of their paying customers had to be out of there, so they weren't, they weren't making the money that they were making. They were just there kind of getting things straightened out and to, to get moved. To, to get their own stuff moved out there, right? Like that. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, but the Department of Revenue, um, doesn't want to do anything. I talked to Tracy from the Department of Revenue and she said she thought they, they uh, probably should be forgiven the taxes, but it's not her call. It's, uh, superiors and they didn't they their feeling whether they were still there on the premises they should pay the taxes um, and as far as how I guess we would have to look at it you know if they if they just flat decide they don't want to pay these taxes um, about the only nothing to regroup there yeah, the, yeah, the, there's there would be no tax deed. I mean, the properties, we are property. not theirs anymore. Um, you know, the only thing you could do would be uh, attach some kind of lien to their store in town, which would probably cause a lot of hurt feelings. And, and in my mind, it's kind it's of bad business. I mean, they serve the community out there for years and years and did a, and did a good job and, and it wasn't their fault that the state um, shut that one of it out. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just, in my mind it just seems like it's a, the taxes for the year were $1,727. You know, and they were, yeah, they were still out there for part of that year, but what, you know, I mean, from January to probably May, all of the people that would normally have been out there were gone. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, their revenue, their revenue source was gone <laughs> until they might have picked up a little bit in the summer, but not nearly what they normally get, I'm sure. Um, or that would that mean you know, I'd make a motion of those be forgiven with Moose Bay. On the one what you're just talking about, listed right there. I would second that motion. Yeah, you know, um, they, uh, these contracts are, are a different monster than a regular business. They're providing a service on behalf of the OR. Um, they don't own anything that's put out there for the contract. It goes directly to BOR. Um, and then with everything that happened, they were hamstrung from being able to really conduct business out there for that last year. I'm um, surprised and disappointed in Department of Revenue and not our folks here in the courthouse again. They just take their marching orders and do as they're told. Yeah. But I, I do think that this should have been looked at a little bit more. Um, based on the facts. Um, so, yeah, I, I agree. Any more further discussion before we take the vote? Where are right. they at now? Where are they? I think, I think they're living right here in town now. Well, I'm going to live south of the bridge. I'm going to live cost, I think. Yeah, that's where they're living at. Yeah, everything is, uh, just about everything's gone out of there. The store's still sitting there and a few things. Here. But Bill are really roofed them. I mean, that was so much stuff. Yeah. And up there where they're great and blatant stuff around there, I guess now they're going to charge them for that. I don't see how they possibly can, but... Mm. Why would they charge them? <laughs> I don't know. That's what the, uh, Jerry told me this a while back. Mm. I wonder if they're kind of treating it like they do a uh, it's mining claim. Yeah, kind of like a, I'm assuming that's how they're going back on like on a leash, you know, anything you... Like if you release something from the state the ground, you put something there, you yeah. gotta take it out with the lease is gone. So uh, I'm assuming that's what they're going by. But, mm -hmm. but I mean, they're, they they worked it on that you know, that in this last couple of three years. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to forgive the taxes for uh, Rellers regarding Goose Bay. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. And I just brought some other information for you guys, things that we were looking into that it's not on the agenda, but it's it was on the agenda last week and you asked me to bring this back to you. It's just information for you. Um, so you guys can study it and kind of let me know when this is on that uh, investment um, board. And this is just Thank a, you. this is what Lewis and Clark has. Do you need a copy of this, Nicole? Yes. Minutes. This is just the um, resolution that Lewis and Clark has, and I know a lot of their um, a lot of what they do won't be won't apply to us. Their quote for six computers was seven thousand um, dollars, and that's for a computer with four gigabytes of memory. And you can get four gigabytes of memory on an SB card. I mean, I think they're I think they're selling us a little good. So I'm going to call they all and see what they'll do for us. I just 
could say you can. I'm not happy with CSA. I think they're trying to make a lot of money off of a little bit of work. I don't think we should be held captive to, to them just because they do our software. It's, if they want our business, they should have to work for it. We shouldn't have to work for them. Okay. Absolutely. I agree with you. One of the things um, that you need is these computers by April 1st. Yeah. Due to the change in the Windows requirement that we've talked about here a couple of times. Yeah. So, um, this April 1st? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. We need to have um, Actually, the last date that I saw was April 8th, but maybe they moved it up. But, um, Windows XP will no longer have any uh, backup or any protection. Um, they're pretty much just based now Windows XP. And because we are with Tyler, we can't go to Windows 8 because their system isn't compatible with Windows 8. I don't believe that uh, Montana Votes is comparable to that either. I think this state still requires Windows 7. But I'll call Dell and see what, what kind of deal they can give us. One of the things that we need to um, be aware of is April 8th is a Tuesday. It's two weeks from tomorrow. Um, we're going to have to get the computers ordered, get them set up. That's going to take a little bit of time. So um, we can table this. Or we can go ahead and approve uh, Doug to go ahead and move forward on what he needs in order to do his job. Um, include <coughs> Julie and Tammy in that for what they need because they'll be incompatible too um, here in, in two weeks and a day. Mm -hmm. And then we could use what's in the mineral royalties and then add what we need to from PILT. We still have um, well over 350000 in PILT. Um, and that's what it's for is to make these you know, unforeseen um, expenditures. Are there any computers up here on this floor that are going to need to be redone? Are there any? Any computers on this floor that need to be redone? No, most of them on this floor are done through um, the state. Takes care of all of them. I checked with uh, Gary and Audrey and Carla and they all. They're all going to use a statement and they're all upgraded. And you got mine or Scott's or Mike's? Mike's should be fine because he has a new program. Uh, it's a new computer. Um, yeah, I'll look and, and see if you and Scott need it. We did yeah, have no, a discussion with that. I don't, it was probably three months ago. As long as you're not Windows XP. I think Doug is right, though. I think it's just Julie and Tammy in your office from our discussion. And from the two IT people over here, it costs, they said it would cost right around $400 a computer just to put one of the seven on it. <coughs> which, you know, you're putting Windows 7 on a computer that's three, four years old. Does it make that's, sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The sad thing is, when you order a computer, by the time it gets here, it's outdated. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and with us having our hands tied, not being able to buy Windows 8, I mean, when, Bev, when I hired Bev, I went into Office Depot, bought a computer, monitor, everything I needed for around $500. And it, it was twice the computer they're trying to sell me for eleven hundred dollars but it wasn't compatible with our system so we couldn't use it. That's sad. Yeah. Frustrating. They got you by the nose. But we have uh, Black Mountain is gonna come and, and talk with us. I believe it's this Wednesday. I have to check my calendar. Is that the seventeenth? That's what I thought was the seventeenth. Okay. And they are compatible with Windows 8. Um, when I talked to 
Dave from, from Black Mountain could basically, if you need a computer, you just go buy it and it works with their system. Um, I don't know. You know, that's quite a savings in itself. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is you are under the gun because you have to have them switched right. over by the 8th and they won't be here for two weeks later, mm -hmm. or I guess a week later. Um, we have a question from the floor. Well, can can I add some information to this? Just gone through this please. whole process personally. I have a son down in, in uh, Phoenix, Arizona who builds computers. The commercial computer is somewhat different than the than the computer we buy at Staples. It has it has heavier duty uh, parts in it that are uh, I don't know they're they're more expensive than the ones we buy here. But uh, just because they're going to discontinue supporting Windows XP on the 11th of November does not mean that Windows XP is not going to be a viable program. It just won't be updated and it won't be viable. So I'm sorry, it won't be uh, uh, protected any, any further than it is today. But don't let them put you under the gun and make a decision, a hasty decision that you don't need to make here. You have time, you have several months of time before that program becomes totally outdated. Look carefully at whether you want to put in Windows 7 or Windows 8.1. Windows 7 is more nearly like XP. Windows 8.1 is a, a, quite a departure. It's made for people who use touch screens. And it's more compatible with the touch screen and more compatible with adding on the telephones and the iPads and, and the other things. So do some research, find out what you want. Um, as far as buying computers, uh, go to a place called newegg.com. They have computers on there. Um, I just bought one. Uh, and what did I get? I got a, a Psy. There's one called an Asus, which is a, a even a better grade of computer, and you can get one with the like eight eight uh, gigs of memory and a terabyte of hard drive for five hundred and fifty six hundred dollars, something like that. And uh, they do make them with uh, like eight or ten gigs of of memory and three terabytes of hard drive. So. What did you say that website was again, Paul? Newegg, www.newegg.com. Thank you, Paul. And there are several other outfits out there that sell computers, some rebuilt, some brand new. And uh, if you want, I'll put you in touch with my son in Phoenix who builds computers commercially. And uh, you can explore his brain some. Absolutely. Do you think you could ask CSA about the XP if it will make it incompatible oh, it, to yeah. work with CSA on the 8th, or do we indeed have? No, it won't. It won't make it incompatible to work with CSA. It just makes it to where your firewalls, your protection is gone. Um, no, it won't be gone. It just won't be updated. Won't be updated, right? That There's might be if we can get crazy. Black Mountain in here find out what they're offering. If we do have some lead time that we can wait, it would allow us to make a little bit more of an educated you got, wise decision. You've got several months of lead time. A lot of our programs are connected with the state. I don't know what they uh, what they're going to require. And we don't have an IT to answer those questions right. for us. But the state right. does have an IT division that could answer it. Yeah, yeah, I, I think it's well worth getting some of those answers because yeah, really I could do everything in one step. And, uh, the hospital yeah. also has an IT and the bank has an IT that they use that probably would be available. They work yeah, only on work stuff. only on commercial. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Sure, you're welcome. How about we table this until Wednesday? And then that way we, we're going to meet Wednesday anyway. We can revisit at that time and have a few more details and, and facts. Okay. Does that work okay for the board? Okay. All right. That's all.
all I have. Did you want me to stick around for the? Uh... Um, hi, you know, only if you want to. Okay, that sounds good. I think this is going to be really fast. Um, thank you, Doug. What this is is just a printout of the journal entries, and uh, Doug and I worked on this this week. Um, in the past, we used to have a um, Excel chart with these. And what we have is already five copies of every single journal entry, and that they're kept by different entities, mostly within the clerk and quarters office. We can look at those individually anytime we like. Um, other departments that have journals have their copies. The commission has our copies, and I'll be bringing the uh, commissioner's copies um, to this board on a monthly basis as soon as we get through these. Um, I could have brought them all, but since it did say on the agenda, um, oh, I thought it said 2013. I can go look at the rest if you want them. But what this is, is a record of what the gen journal entries are, their number on the left-hand column, the date, uh, the debit and the credit, which of course have to balance, and then the memo, what it was for. And so what I was thinking is, if it's okay with you two, um, instead of taking time at a commissioner meeting to go through these, we'll have the printouts, go through those, um, which is the report that Doug runs. And then um, if uh, anybody wants to investigate in a particular journal, um, we can certainly go and look at those uh, in Doug's office at any time. So it's pretty self-explanatory, pretty much. It's just black and white laid out there for us. Um, and uh, so it's 11.10. Since we have till 11.30, if you two would like, I'd be happy to go get the rest of them. Uh, sure. Okay. I just have one copy, but certainly it's um, certainly something we can just look at together, or I can make copies if you two would like. Thanks, Nicole. First page, the very top one. PR mm -hmm. would be payroll. These are for June through February. I've looked at them down in our office. Basically, when the county 
collects taxes for the school, for the city, for Three Forks. A journal entry is made when that check is sent for the tax we collect on their behalf and then send it to them. So what you want to be looking at is that there were no checks written to somebody that the county shouldn't be writing checks to. State of Montana Department of Revenue, Gallatin County Treasurer Three Forks, um, Treasurer Accounting Posting, um, Employee Payroll, that kind of thing are what you'd expect. just one for each month there, but they don't build on each other, so you could look at a June and then an August without missing anything. Um, you know, and then come back and look at July. It doesn't have to be done in order, so that's why I didn't bother to take the time right now and make copies. And those will just be in the commissioner's office uh, to look at at any time. What's that CR interface? What's that mean? Pardon me? That CR interface, what's that mean? Just curious. Cash revenue.
this that stack I handed you? Yeah. And that's that one? That, that's that one shelf again. Right. We do have an 11.30, so it's all, if it's all right with you guys, what we can do is um, just take those back down to the commission office if you want to look at them there, or Wednesday and have them at the meeting, um, or bring them back next Monday, whatever works for you guys. And flexible. Nicole Brown, Planner, Parks and Rec, uh, request decision regarding county property for recreation. Are you ready? Comfy chair. No. You certainly may. <laughs> may. Yep, three copies here. Thank you. I was in approximately six months ago on behalf of the Parks and Rec Board. We were looking at uh, pursuing developing small fry football field on the county owned property. Um, I've just sketched in there, you can see that black rectangle on that county property there, uh, for the piece of ground that we would be interested in using. This is 
completely within the floodplain, within the designated floodplain area. So it's non-buildable for any other structures or any other um, consideration maybe that the county had been given to towards it. So basically what I'm looking for today, um, our Parks and Rec Board is moving forward pretty rapidly with this plan, but I just, I, I would like to uh, obtain a motion, I guess, from the commission today that we can indeed use that piece of property for a, um, mostly a football field. It could be used for any type of, of park facility. We will have it striped for a football field. It's approximately 140 um, yards by 60 yards. I think it's how they measure that. And it is in floodplain? It is. Yep, completely within floodplain. Um, myself and Mike Delger went to the school board meeting a few weeks ago to request the lights that they have at the football field. They have, they've installed some new lights. Um, there's a gentleman that lives here in the county, Tim Newman, runs uh, a lineman training facility. He would be willing to donate all of his time and use it for his training purposes to remove those lights from the football field and move them over to this area and install them. So it just seemed like a good opportunity for the county to capitalize on that. We're still waiting to hear back from the facilities department of the school um, as to whether or not we could have those lights. But instead of moving forward without getting a, a firm um, motion from this commissioner or from this body of commissioners, I just you know I wasn't comfortable moving forward with him, you know, removing those lights and installing them just yet. Does this fit within the scope of the Parks and Rec Board? Yes, yes indeed it does. Yep. And it would be our very first uh, project that we'd be tackling. So. All right. Um, my only question, I guess, is, uh, is there going to be room for, for parking there? You know, with the, the county of gravel or anything mm -hmm. in there? Um, you know, and that's something that we'd have to talk long term. I know that there are a couple of discussions going on. If I'm not mistaken, Sean Higley is working on putting together a plan and getting input from different departments that are interested in utilizing this property. Um, one option I've heard is that you know they would be removing that those dirt piles anyway to create a parking area. Um, you know this this is all very long term and we certainly you know this wouldn't be a field that we'd be playing on this year. Just with the situation with the lights moving forward and then you know with all of the other departments coming forward and you know, getting their input in. Um, I thought I would Because I imagine the road's going to want to keep most of that there mm -hmm. for their use. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I'm not sure what, what the, how they would feel about that, about moving those dirt piles. Oh, do they have to move any of those to have this done? No, no, not for the not for the park itself. Right. Not for the park land. For parking, um, you know, that would be a whole other discussion. And, uh, you know, we certainly, the, the Parks and Rec Board does want to put together an overall plan for that whole area as to how parking would be utilized. Um, who would pay the electricity? Would the city pay for the water um, irrigation? And, you know, we have, we have a laundry list of items that we still have to look at before we can actually build this. Um, I'm simply requesting to secure the actual piece of property for the park. Um, you know, and, and soccer, of course, could use it. Uh, high school, I know that they're sometimes looking for junior high practice fields because junior high football high school football run the same season so you know this this wouldn't be exclusively a, a small fry football field it simply would be striped for football soccer fields need a bit larger I believe it's for the U18 division um, they need a bit larger but we don't want to um, bump into any other any other departments use of that property so you know, we kind of have to keep it at, at a manageable size My only request would be that you continue to be engaged with the group that's working with Sean Higley on this so that everybody's on the same page. There is some talk of moving the um, power line that goes right through the middle and that would benefit your project as well. Um, so that's that's my only, my only thought, which you've already been engaged, so it's an easy one, I think. Any other questions from the board? No, as long as I would say a uh, road would have to be contact and make sure that it's okay with them where they're keeping their, their gravel. Road has been involved in this. Not not in this 
Parks and Recreation project, but in the master plan discussions for this area. So that I don't see any reason why that would cease. As a mother and grandmother of football players, I'd say go. <laughs> <laughs> so I would entertain a motion uh, to allow the Parks and Rec Board to go ahead with their plan. I'll so move. Yeah, I'll, I'll second that. Okay. Uh, I've been moved and seconded to allow the uh, Parks and Rec Board to proceed with their plan for uh, utilizing floodplain land that is already county property. Is there any discussion as this is a subject that um, is of significant public interest? Yes, Paul. Just for my interest, where are we talking about? Um, there's a map right here, and you're welcome to this if you like. It's uh, the county has the old fairgrounds this way out of town. It's behind the Perry Building at the Cedar Canister site. There's 17 acres there right now, and this is the property that's solidly in the floodplain. So you, you can't build on it. You really right. can't use it except for maybe recreational purposes. So that's what they're looking at. Okay. There's there's a piece of it, maybe a third of the property that's out of the floodplain, and this is actually not in that third. Any other questions? All right, John. Hi, Laura. My name is John Wright. That floodplain that you're talking about, can't that be elevated to build like something other than like the county needs something for the solid waste? That's all you got to do is elevate it up two, three feet. You got plenty of stuff out there. We can go through the process, you bet. And with 17 acres, there's a lot of land we can play with. Uh, I couldn't understand why you had nothing already been done with it because the piles are already there. I agree. All right. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. You guys may move ahead. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. We're a little bit ahead of schedule. Go back to some mail until we start.